There you go, buddy, with your little snaggle tooth. Yeah, me and you got something in common. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? As you guys probably know, it's almost Halloween, which means you could pretty much go up to your neighbors, knock on the door, and demand you give them candy. It's like Christopher Columbus Day with, uh, with candy. But for potters, it's a whole different story. For potters, that means we get to make clay pumpkins. So today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a pumpkin out of clay. And as long as you know how to do it in closed form, it's actually extremely easy. When you really think about it, what is a pumpkin except for a big old round form with a couple ridges in it? The most difficult part of this actually isn't making the form, it's making the stem. But today, we're gonna show you how to make that nice stem. But first, we have to throw our enclosed form. Potter tip! I know that I've said this before in another video, but whenever you're making an enclosed form, make sure that you keep this top portion of your vessel here nice and colored in. It's going to be a lot more difficult to color this in because you are going to be closing up this top part to meet the two parts into one focal point than it would be if you just kept it in in the first place. And don't forget, we are making the shape of a pumpkin today, so we're going to be extending this part fairly far and we're going to be closing this in to make what would be the stem. And we can't forget to cut off the skirt right here for that nice pumpkin round shape. So I like to do this right before I start popping out the body. You know, because pumpkins are mostly round or in this weird egg shape, so we can't just like leave this junk on. And now we start popping out that body into the nice round pumpkin shape that we all know and love. Potter tip number two. Again, I know when I made the other enclosed form video, I said this beforehand, but whenever you're making an enclosed form, make sure that you only pop out the body about two thirds of the actual vessel itself. You see this part right here? In order to make an enclosed vessel or enclosed form, you need to close this part up. That's what makes it an enclosed form. And I can't really do that if I pop the body way out here. It's pretty much the same exact reason why I told you guys to make sure this part is colored in pretty tightly before you actually make your cylinder or start forming your cylinder. We want this part to be as least work as possible to actually choke or color this in in order to make our nice stem here or our enclosed form. Now it's time to close up that form at the very top there. You see this part right here? You see how it's really wiggly at the top? Usually I would cut this part off and fix it a little bit, but I don't really care because I know I'm going to be making a pumpkin at the end of this video. Don't stress too much over this part because you'll see in a little bit that this actually gives the pumpkin a little bit of character at the end. So if you want to cut it off, that's fine, but if you want to leave it, that's fine too actually, so don't stress over this part. Now that I've tightened that neck up, I'm just going to close it off real easy, just like this. And make sure I squeeze real tight, that way there's no air that can escape. See? There you go. Now once you have this form, you're pretty much done, and there's only two things left that you need to do. The first thing that you have to do is alter this top portion right here. You see how I didn't smooth it out at all? Well, that's because I need to make a stem, and most pumpkin stems are really natural and have all these types of textures on them. I don't really need to make this nice and smooth and symmetrical, because I'm about to mess it up. Start by putting a little bit of water on the very top portion of this vessel. And then I'm going to start pulling upwards, just like I was making a handle for a cup, but upside down instead. Now there's a couple ways to do this. You can either wet your hand, make a little circle like you're pulling a handle, and pull this upwards just like this and keep turning your hand as you go, or you can do what I do and just wet the knuckles of your hands as well as your fingertips and just start pulling in any direction you want. Sometimes I even do it with both hands. Now you have this really nice looking stem, and you can shape it however you want because it's nice and wet. Sometimes I even like to curl it to give it a little bit of an emphasis. The next part is the most easy part of this entire thing. Go ahead and wet whatever hand you want. Take your thumb or your finger and either go from the top to the bottom 
or the bottom to the top, but only do it with one finger and make sure that you're pressing really hard. I myself prefer to go from the bottom to the top and just push really hard into the clay body. You're gonna make sure you make a big old long finger trail. Just like this, and you're gonna keep on doing this throughout the entire clay body until you get all the way around. And for the final touch, we're just gonna make sure that we get the rest of that clay body at the bottom to make a nice round shape. And don't forget to smooth out those edges on your finger lines just to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. You see, and there you go. You have just made your very first pumpkin form. It's actually extremely easy once you understand how to make an enclosed form. You pretty much just alter the top to make it look like a pumpkin stem and run your fingers from the base all the way to the top or from the top all the way down to the bottom to get those nice pumpkin ridges. Let's make one more just for the heck of it. Later, in the void. And it wouldn't be very much of a Halloween video if we didn't carve some little happy derp face into this. Smooth out those edges just a little bit, not too much. There you go, buddy, with your little snaggle tooth. Yeah, I mean, you got something in common. Potter tip. I don't do this very often, but if you want to go for extra brownie points, you can always wait until this whole form drives a tiny bit and put a big old hole right at the bottom of the form. This way you can get a little tiny candle and put your newly made pumpkin right on top of that candle so the eyes and the mouth light up something fierce. It'll scare away all the kids who do Fortnite dances. Well thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. And I will see you Dirty Potters next week. I'm sorry this doesn't look as good as some of you guys want it to look. I don't even celebrate holidays, let alone make jack-o'-lanterns.